If you don't believe in yourself, then who's going to believe in you? Believe in yourself, okay? Believe in your power. That's where it starts out. You got this. So act like you got this. Act like you already have it. Know that this is the time to be something of worth. I think the first thing is recognizing that you are not what you do. Inspire yourself into the right direction. Look, find things to latch onto, hook on to things that inspire you, fill your eyes and your soul with them, and know that this is your power. This is the advantage you have over everyone else. You fill yourself up with things that inspire you and fuel you day after day after day. Being around people that inspire me, not by their words, but more so by their actions. Uh, I hear a lot of people talk every single day. And I was one of these guys. And I started not to listen to what people said, but started to watch how people acted and how they interacted with other people. And that helped me set the bar for where I want to be. Just know that you can be your potential. Know that you can be this. Know that you have this and that tonight you're gonna fight for it. A battle for your power. A battle, but knowing that you come out on top. This is, this is what it's all about, you know? And I used to say it all the time, why me, why me, why me? And all of a sudden that conversation changed to, yeah, yeah, like why not me? Like why not me? And I think the more you can start looking at facing adversity by saying why not me, you approach things with a completely different mentality than a person who feels like they're going to be a victim. You start becoming the hunter again. And the more you can stay with that hunter mentality, it will pay dividends. Everyone wants to eat, but few are willing to hunt. Who do you want to be? How do you want people to see you? Stronger, hardworking, successful? If you want people to see you like that you, you need to change. Change and grow. Strengthen yourself. Build up your potential. Construct your future. Who are you going to be? Are you going to be that person that wallows in their self-pity? Are you going to be that person that says, you know what, okay, I did this wrong, I did that wrong, but how can I be better? And I think that's what I talk about, that relentless mentality right. to want to be better at just life in general. And that you have to find balance in life, right? So there are going to be times where your, your journey is going to be down here and it's going to be tough. Um, and the same when things get high, you know, you sign a new deal or you have, you know, you have to be able to keep things in perspective. And I think sometimes when I stop, I force myself to assess, okay, what are the, where are the benefits? You know, where are the negatives? Um, how can I, how can I turn this negative into a positive? All right, let me make sure that I don't get too high and I continue to keep my head down and work harder because I, I want to achieve more. If it's not for me, for the people that work for me or for my girlfriend or my mom deserves better. So I try to find that one thing because I'm very goal oriented um, that I, I need to work towards. And once I achieve that, it's another goal. And I, I don't want it to ever stop because that's what life should be. Be selfish and take control of your life. Take control of your abilities. Take control of your potential. Don't waste any more time. Take courage to provide for yourself. To provide your potential, grasp it. No longer will you be afraid to make it, to change it. No one else is living your life. Take control. Practice. Patience. Progress. Take yourself through the barrier. I came back mentally. Right. Like that's a story. Like that's a, that's a story that should be cherished for younger kids out there, for older people out there. It doesn't matter. You don't have to come back and do what you did before and do it exponentially better. You have to come back better as a person and 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 really value that process. Like that's a comeback. It's amazing when you have to be vulnerable to talk about issues that a lot of people aren't willing to talk about. And I think choose is a really imperative word because a lot of people choose not. Choose not to, you know, follow up on things that happened in their past or sit time to reflect. I am where I am and only I can change it. 
you are the only person that could change it. At the end of the day, people can want to help you as much as they want to help you. And I, I don't think complaining is the answer either. I, I think vulnerability and, and, and talking to people about what's actually going on in your life gets them invested in you. And the more you listen to them, gets them invested. You know, you invest it back in them. And that's when a bond is formed. But that person can only take you so far. You have to want to take yourself to a different place. And if you don't have that, then you're going to stay stuck. And a lot of people choose to stay stuck. And we see it every single day. And you have to be vulnerable enough with yourself to accept the fact that it happened. Bad stuff happens to everybody. Um, you have to drive your own car. And if you don't drive it, somebody else is going to drive it for you. And that, that other person is driving it may not be a person. It may be a darkness, that entity that we talked about that is easy to get lost and consumed in. You have the power. The power to become someone that even the deepest part of you trusts. Someone you trust to succeed. Become the person that you know you can be. Stand up for your future, for your power, and for you to be something full of the worth that is in you. You know, we spend so much time talking to other people and giving other people advice on what they need to do in their life. And sometimes you need to sit down and give yourself advice on what's, what's best for you. It's fulfilling to recognize that nobody is the perfect end product and that everybody has stuff to work on. But once you're able to say, wow, that, that is something I need to work on, and you, you feel yourself taking the steps necessary to be better at it, Don't do something, you do something because you have to do it. Do something to take a step out of the line. Move away from the ordinary. Don't stop because of failures. Don't quit because it is getting hard. Success comes at a price and you must be willing to pay it. This storm will pass and when it does, if you are still standing, you will be stronger for it. Don't quit. You are already hurting. Why stop now? You have already come this far. Why give in when it gets hard? Why? Don't say, why me? Say, try me. It's not always going to be easy. There are going to be challenges. There's still going to be curveballs thrown at me. But I, I, I can't become uh, introverted. I, I, I have to continue to get outside myself because when you're uncomfortable, that's the only way you're going to grow. You're so busy in the minutia and the, the clutter that you're running through your life with your head down. And uh, it was the first time I had to sit and evaluate. And that process within itself is rewarding, peaceful to my soul and my spirit, but still, still drives me because I still know I have such a long way to go and I, I have to continue the process and never stop. You want the hard times. You want the pain. You want resistance. Because if there is resistance, you are growing, you are developing. Stop wishing it was easier. Wish you were better. As I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant, already working out. And I'm like, okay, it's kind of cool. It's Kobe. What's up, Kobe, you know? And uh, you know, so I put my sneakers on and do you ever get lost in what you do where you end up like, wait, it's been an hour and a half? Like I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm here, I'm in it. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down. And of course, I still hear the ball bouncing. I look down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out. He was working out. For like It looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here. Right. And he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves, you know? Um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes. I'm like, I want to see how long this goes. So I sit out there and watch uh, 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, okay, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why why he, he works like that. Right. So after the games, I'm like, hey, Kobe, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. And I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. And he's like, it's, don't hold, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm not saying I right. dislike you as a person. You just, you inspire me to be better. Right. 
Right. And it was the first time I started to see this level of competitiveness where I said, I need to start doing more. Right. Wow. If you think you are the only guy doing an extra hour after practice, you are wrong. When you are doing an extra hour, there is a guy doing an extra two hours. Think beyond your team. It is easy to be a big fish in a small pond. It is time to think outside of your circle and compete with the best of the best. Compete with the guys who are getting more work than you. You can convince yourself you work hard when you compare yourself to someone in class or someone on the team or your brother or your sister. But how does your work ethic look when you compare yourself to a Kobe Bryant or a Michael Jordan?